Hey guys, Human here, and this time I am joined by my friend Tessero, whom recently got 4th in the Digimon regional hosted by Core TCG. Tessero, please introduce yourself, and then we'll go straight into the decklist. Hi, I'm Tessero. Uh, I'm just a guy who likes playing Purple. I've been playing the game since it came out in Japan. Uh, I play Purple because my favorite Digimon is Wizardmon, and that's where he is. Uh, I'm... Oh, I'm a modern Huang server because I'm a friend of his. Alright, then we'll go straight into the decklist. Um, so what do we have here? We have Lilith Loop. Um, so let's talk it's about it. It's your list. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about it. Our, we have our eggs and rookies. Yeah, we have our eggs, right? For Demi Mera, Gabu, Gazi, Psych. Uh, I mean, what can I say? It's it's literally your list. Uh, I just I needed a list to go take to regionals. And I didn't have VT9, and so we were chatting, and you suggested I just play your list. So I just took your list, and I went, and I got there. Now, right. it, it takes a player that's able to pilot it to make it far, and you're able to pilot it. So you mm -hmm. have to give yourself credit for that. <laughs> I guess I got to do that. Yeah, you, you gotta give I guess credit. there's like one difference between your list and that it is in the rookies. And it's, uh, you were playing one Psychmon, one Elecmon. I swapped that out for another Psychmon because in the top cut TCG regional that I attempted, I lost to Reaper and I felt like I wanted to have the extra Psychmon because I got salty. Oh, no. all right. <clears throat> but yeah, let's let's go through your whole list. Um, we got through rookies. Um, mm -hmm. you're now the champion lined up, level fours. Champion for scatter mode, obviously. Scatter mode's busted. Great card. Which you always want to see because he fixes he he does it all he fills the trash he gets you your hand your combo pieces uh, pokes pokes damage amazing card and the broken one of so good it had to be limited because it's so good all right you swing your scatter have it die bring out eyes one evolve it to serb continue you know continue combos from there it's amazing uh, and the other level fours or be the the kaku package kinkaku ginkaku kinkaku promote uh, fantastic cards. Um, you know, Rush is always relevant. With uh, Omnimon, you play it, promote with that, and get the free memory if you have these two in the trash, uh, which is nice because it gets you even more. It's, that's, even, that's just even more to extend your combo, your turn with. Um, and Kinkaku especially comes up a lot. Uh, I fought like. Uh, wait, did you want to do matchups now or later? Uh, you can do matchups now, or I'll ask. Yeah, I'm, I was gonna. Later. Yeah, but like. Um, the Brigade was surprisingly popular. I fought it like twice, and King Kakumon is great because, you know, they just spam Commandras, and what better way to deal with that than with just a free level 3 del deletion, right? Yeah, you're right. Um, it's like... It, it, it's it's perfect. You know, every, every time they have a body on board, you can delete it each swing, right? It's, yeah, it's funny. It's funny because it's like they play a lot of removal, right? They've been playing what the uh, Ultimate Flare and Iron Fist, and sometimes they would play the Iron Fist and give me five, and I go, okay, promote effect. So he's effectively five cost swing popper rookie. <laughs> that is true. All right. Um, I see that you're only doing three and three werewolf. Uh, three servers, three werewolf. Yes. Yeah, that's because you need to make space for Lucimon somehow, right? Like, I'd love to play for. There's, like, not really space for it because this, the space is already really tight in this deck. Um, but you draw enough, generally, to find them. It sucks when you don't. You just take that out sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's very unfortunate. Um, <clears throat> we see the Lucys. Uh, of course, we, we gotta have our Lilith Mon. So, what do you of think course. of Creepy Mon? Oh, I love Creepy Mon. I used to play him, too, in my own list back when I was playing back in BT8. Um, now this is Ying's list, so I'm playing just the one. But one is enough because you have calling to bring it back. But creepy is like so important. Um, it's not often. It's we're in a single stack meta, so it's not that often that it come that like you can pop off with it, or at least use the the first effect of it. But it does come up sometimes. They like swing and they have to end their turn by playing a, a rookie, and then you go cool. Now nah, I can get creepy mon value. Um, or if you're against the reaper, this this is always value, right? Um, but the big thing, the big thing is the mill, because that just turns on like an alternate win condition for you against either like really slow games or security control, especially. I 
I fought one security control player, and in both game both games that I beat him, I milled him out with creepy. Yeah, I see. There's the Avenge Kid and Juno package as well. Um, of course. What do you think of those two? Super important. Uh, I don't think this deck is. Um, I don't. Th- I don't think you can go without it anymore. Like that you draw and discard and mill so hard, you're guaranteed to deck yourself out at some point, especially in long games. Um, and Avenge Kid just goes, okay, cool. Just uh, refill the deck with all these sick option cards that like win you the game, right? And so it keeps you, it keeps you from losing to deck out. Uh, it's another cheap removal, so sometimes you can use it to out-tempo your opponents too. Uh, it helps you just straight up win the BL Star matchup for free, right? Um, yeah, it's like you you mill yourself so much. Like in the, the security control matchup, <clears throat> I told you I milled them out, and I milled them out despite the fact that I played Avenge Kid to stop myself from decking out first because I milled so hard with Creepy. But I still needed to mill, to stop myself from decking out with Avenge Kid because those games were lasting that long that I was running out of cards in deck. Yes. All right. Um, um, it our used options. to be that. Oh, I, mean, I was going to say one more thing. It used to be that like Mega Digimon Fusion was available, and that was your anti deck out because you would just use Mega Digimon Fusion, you use your sword, end of your turn, goes back to your deck. Now you have another turn, right? Um, that's gone. So you need something. And that, so we have a bench kid, is sort of our what we have to do now as loot players. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of lists before, a lot of them have not, do not play Zort. Um, what do you think of the Zort and win rate in this list? Okay, yeah, I used to be one of those players because I played uh, Demon Lords back in in BT8. I think I, there's like a still the um, profile up on Taste of Victory channel back when I played it that way, and like I didn't put the Zorts in because I wanted a space for for a bunch of other stuff like extra rookies, former consistency, and all that. But Sword feels so important now that I'm playing with Sword again. He's so important. You need that burst damage potential that Zort gives you so much. It makes you so much more like threatening, right? It makes it gives you so many more opportunities to go. Okay, I popped off, and because I popped off and had Zort, I win the game because it gives you so much more like extension, more more bodies, more more damage. And not only that, Zort popping bodies, especially like Gatekeeper, because that's like your only way to out Gatekeeper, is also just super important. Um, our option level looks pretty standard, but then the different ones I see, Death Slinger, Miss Memory Boost, what do you think of those? Death Slinger is cracked. Best card. It's so good, so efficient, right? And because you you, you uh, fill your trash so fast, you, it's, uh, it's pretty effective a lot of times. Not every time, sometimes the opponent like just draws the nuts, turn one, and has their full stack available before you even have anything in trash. And that sucks, but you know, you gotta live with it. But the more removal, the better. Um, removal is really nice in this format. Everyone's playing Metal Garu X. And the thing about Metal Garu X is they don't have protection, right? So you you gotta, you pop them, right? Um, also, without Deathslinger, without Deathslinger, you also have way fewer outs to level sevens. Like sure, you need like 30 cards in trash, but in slow matchups like security control, 30 cards in trash is more than doable. And then you can use Death Slinger to out Dex Mons that they've been dropping on you. Mm-hmm. So we have a lineup of three analogs. A lot of other lists I've seen before have four analog or possibly even a memory tamer. Do you think three is enough or should we, should there ever be a memory tamer? Uh, Memory Tamer would be nice, especially for all the turns where I get stuck at like one memory and like most of your plays are like two memory, two memory, two memory, two memory. It's like kind of annoying, but at the same time, there's like hardly any space. Um, generally, you're kind of fine because you have Jack Raids and Mist Memory Boost to make up for it. Maybe the Mist can be swapped out for a Memory Tamer. I think the three analogs are fine. Yeah, I think we both of us used to run four. Um, since it's your list, I think you probably were the first person to drop to cut down the three analogs, and I saw them, I saw them enough times at least. You don't, they're like they're nice, but they're not like it's not like you absolutely need to get the memory from it from popping your Cerberus to to win the game. Uh, Black War Gray pops them a lot often, more, off more, a lot more often now too. Uh, three is fine, I think. Um, I was never like 
hurting for it, I guess, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. All right. So now we'll go into each of your matchups. Um, what were all your matchups like? All right. I th- my, the matchups I fought were Imperial, Bellstar, two D Brigade players, Security Control, two Ergaro players, one Alpha Mon, and one Gaiomon deck. Um, I think the first match I fought was the Imperial, and that one was uh, I don't remember much about it because it was like the first round. Um, it was pretty standard, I think, thanks to the Death Slingers. I think he was pretty bricked, and thanks to the Death Slingers and Death Claws, I was able to keep him off anything important for him to like, you know, inevitably pop off on me with. Um, and of course, having security bombs like Death Slinger, Death Claw, that are alive, uh, really helped to like stop jamming uh jank Pyildras from like take, completely taking over the game on you as well as jack raids especially too yeah mm-hmm. so what was your most favorable matchup my favorite most favorable matchup is definitely Sakon. slow pretty slow game plan generally speaking um even if they want to go aggressive your removal spells keep you from dying and lose someone as well too i love having lose someone just to make sure that you're never like out of the game just by having zero security. You always have a, a way to go. Okay, I'm still in, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know they they generally play kind of dirtily. They kind of just uh, spam healing on you. And uh, against that, you can sure you can you can either like fill, fill up your trash and inevitably combo off and just like not care about how much they heal, or you can just wait it out and uh, creep him on them for game because uh, they've They've stalled out until they've gotten like 18 cards in trash, and then you go creepy mon, swing, calling from darkness, get back the creepy mon, jack raid, evolve the creepy mon over something else, swing, and you know, mill them out. Yeah. Uh, what about your least favorable matchup? Uh, I'd probably say that's Alpha Mon. Maybe that's just because that's like the one matchup I lost to uh, in, this, in this event. But Alpha Mon is so rough, right? Like, I, I initially thought it would be Metal Garo, but Metal Garo was, like, actually a lot more beatable than expected just because of all the deletion effects that I had, right? Yeah. That's so it's sense. like, they don't they don't always just OTK you, and if they fail to OTK you, you can, like, pop them with Lucimon or with Death Slinger and then turn that, like, turn that tempo towards yourself and then snowball that into your win because all you need is one good turn, right? You just need one good turn with like 20 cards in trash, and then you go Lilith combo into just winning the game right away. So all you need to do is just survive. Uh, but with Alpha Mon, they have that protection, and because of that, it's so much harder to like put yourself into a position where you guarantee you live an extra turn and uh, you know turn that into a victory. Um, it probably also doesn't help that the one Alpha Mon player I, I played against was the guy who got like second and was playing two Chumons. Um, and and ha- having uh, sometimes you just can't, like, you run the Death Claws and the Death Slingers and the Kinkakus to out um, memory blockers, but sometimes you just, you're just not in the position to do so, right? Uh, and we probably saw that on stream too. Uh, <laughs> if this Psychmon was the Elecmon that was originally in Ying's list, uh, then I possibly could have popped two Chum- both Chumons and popped off from there. But we'll so I guess you could know. say that's like the other bad ch- matchup is that any deck that runs an excessive amounts of memory blockers are just like the worst to deal with. <laughs> Very true. Uh, especially with this format where every single deck is playing some sort of memory boost or memory gain, um, memory blockers are essential. Uh, all right, what would you change in this deck, though? Uh, this deck is pretty good. Um, besides maybe, like, swapping the Psychmon out back for the Elecmon for, like, the occasional moments that it's good in, I still kind of like the two Psychmons because uh, it comes up well enough. It, you know, it helps you quite a bit with the Reaper matchup, but there's also matchups like Bellstar that I fought that it came up in, and it can also help you in the second matchup by, like, stopping them from using Dexmon to, like, reduce your board size or punish you for going wide. Um, one thing I was thinking about is my favorite Digimon, Wizardmon. Uh, my friend Cooper Koshiro also got top 16 in, in this event. He got, like, 15th place. He was playing Grand Kuwagumon, 
and he all he wanted was to go X3 and quit, but he managed to go X and two and get and top and get his invite here. Uh, ironically, I guess uh, he's the kind of guy who would put his favorite Digimon Kunemon in his list just as a one of. And I kind of want to do the same with Wizardmon. Uh, promo Wizard one, I actually feel I feel like it can come up because uh, it has the kind of effect that Lip kind of likes. You know, when you play an option, gain a memory. Uh, I feel like you can, if you just put that on, like on a Cerberus, you can jack raid real quick before you go into Werewolf for a free memory and free trash fill. Especially if you're like at nine, nine in trash, you can jack raid and not have it be a complete waste. Uh, so it can come up. The issue with that is that this deck is so limited in space. There's very few places where I can swap this in. Maybe I can swap the Mist Man Boost. That Mist Man Boost has been like a bro this entire event. So it's like I can't, doesn't, that doesn't feel right either, right? Lusamon could probably be cut, the yellow Lusamon, but that that also comes up here and there. And it's really funny with the Avenge Kid Mon. So I'd like to put like one Wizard Mon in here for luck. I just don't know how right now. I'll have to figure it out eventually. Yes, that's something we'll have to look forward to. But. Thank you very much, Tessero. Um, hope you'll continue playing purple and maybe you'll oh, win the event next one. You're going to win the next one, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll win the next one. And now, oh yeah, we're, we have BT10 coming up shortly as well. Will you be playing Minerva True. Loop? I'll be trying Minerva Loop for sure. Um, I yeah. don't know. Minerva Loop feels a little different than Lilith Loop. Uh, a lot of the spots are a lot more solidified in that list. Like you have the three to four Minervas and um, the, whatchamacallit, Return from the Darkness. Return from the Darkness I'm not the biggest fan of because it's almost entirely used just for the, the combo with Minerva. It's not like Jack Raid or Death Slinger or Calling where they're kind of flexible cards that you can use like at any time for like specific moments. It's just, so I'm like, I'm back. I'm iffy on Minerva Loop for that reason, but other than that, from what I've seen, Minerva Loop looks really good, and I'll probably go to it just because it's purple, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let's look forward to it. Look forward to your future performance. Um, thank you, Tessero. Uh, remember to kick the like, comment, and subscribe button.